hope it it's it doesn't come out. Four there. minutes, you said no, about. No, just mm -hmm. Well, you asked me about Monday Thursday, and at first I said no, and I thought I need to say yes. And the reason being, I grew up in the Presbyterian Church U.S., and I would never have even heard the word Monday Thursday. I uh, remember in those years, you got ready for Easter Sunday. But in my family, you did not wear a new dress. You, if you had a new dress, you could wear it on Palm Sunday, but you couldn't wear it on Easter because everybody else did, and that was not what Easter was about. So you had to wear a dress that you'd worn before. But it, it, in Atlanta, it was always cold, so you had this wonderful spring dress and you froze to death. But then I joined the United Church of Christ when I got married. And part of the United Church of Christ comes out of the ENR tradition. Mm -hmm. It's a merger of the Evangelical and Reformed Church and the Congregational. And I was living in the Evangelical and Reformed side of the church. So everything I learned as in seminary and as a pastor had high liturgical meanings. And it was a wonderful experience. And I really sort of feel sad. I think it was because of John Calvin, so worried about the Roman tradition that he probably wiped out too much. So Maundy Thursday for me is now a very important day. Uh, Maundy is just taken from that Latin word which means command, mandatum. But a, a lot happened on Monday, Thursday, and for Jesus and the Lord's Supper, which we think we say happened on Monday, Thursday, it was the Passover meal. Now, I'm not sure why we call it Monday because Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you that you love one another. But that, that didn't necessarily happen on the Last Supper. Mm -hmm. So we have a collection of things. And Monday, Thursday is really one of three days, which in the Lutheran and ENR tradition would be called tradium, which just means three days of prayer. So uh, we work at all of those. Then what changed and enriched my life was living in Cambridge for seven different years. So we always went to King's College for those high holy days. Uh, Monday, Thursday, not so much, but Good Friday, they would have finished with everybody barefooted and all of the acolytes and the chaplains removing every piece of uh, uh, ornamentation. The, the big picture, that the Rubens picture that stands at the front is closed, the candelabra leaves, and the choir leaves all in silence, and everybody else leaves in silence. Uh, in Ely, which we also went to that cathedral often, uh, the year we were there, the queen came, and on uh, Maundy Thursday, she gives out pennies. Now, pennies are now, for the queen, a special uh, coin, and they're given to people who have done loving things, often people who are poor, who are not necessarily, certainly not wealthy. And of course, those coins now are extremely valuable and nobody would ever give them away. And one year we were there, the queen came to Ely and that was a wonderful experience. And she comes and, and so, uh, and then Easter Sunday is like it is for us. It's just a, a glorious holy day with lots of music. But it begins with these days of prayer, which to me makes Easter so much more richer because you've been in prayer. And then I, I have to say also, when we lived in Cambridge, we, uh, we went to uh, a nunnery. It was a group of, of women who do not speak, except that they worship seven times a day, so they hardly get any work done. But they read a lot. They read while they eat, and they were reading Walter's books. So they found out we were in Cambridge and invited us, and so every time we went back, we were invited, and 
they their rich uh, celebration of the High Holy Days. So one Saturday night, we went to them before Easter, mm -hmm. where the fire is outside, and we had this wonderful experience of uh, getting ready and coming to Easter. Of course, in the Roman tradition, they had to have a priest for part of it, and that was really funny because he was a, a very old man that a sister had to get on each side of him and help him walk. They could have, they had to tell him what to say. They knew better than he did, which tells me that the Roman church needs to find out that women can be ministers too. But that was another rich experience of the ritual of the church is very, very important. And that's one reason why we are hungering so in this COVID time is that we cannot come together for that. So what uh, celebration we will have when that sanctuary is filled with people. Again. And yes, and it won't be long, mm -hmm. but we all yearn for it. it. It is a hunger in our lives that we hardly know how to speak about, I think. Like well, it, I mean, even if you tied it even into this conversation, right? When I was kind of like thinking about all this, like, right? Like Jesus going to the garden to kind of like be away and before this thing, like this idea of just kind of like practicing to build your container, mm -hmm. to be able to hold these things in one space. Is, so it's, it's a good model. But, yeah. All right. We're, we're, we're rolling, right? Yeah. Oh, we're so rolling. We just started though. So I think, I think actually... Am I looking... Yeah, um, you can look wherever you want. I've got a couple cameras, so <laughs> you can just talk to, if you're talking over. to both of talk us. Talk to David. Yeah, but, like but, but also to yeah, Mary Karen you're fine. and Sam. But, yeah. So yeah. we're glad you're with us. You've been doing this work, and we, we wanted to have a good conversation during good. in this lead up with Holy Week um, and, and hear some of your thoughts. Sure. Um, so, Holy Week for me, I always. Uh, I always go to thoughts around the Last Supper, right? Like it's been something that, you know, as a, as a child, you hear about it, you you read, hear the stories, and they, you know, it, it's in movies, and there's paintings and works of art. It's all about this 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 moment of the Last Supper, and so um, I remember, you know, as as a child doing communion in church, right? Like you're just excited because you got the little glass of juice that you could. You know, look out when you were done, and um, you know, you, you know, there's meaning, but you don't know what that is, and 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 you see it in one way, in one one frame. Um, my grandmother's Catholic, and so going with her once, I still remember that. Right? They're speaking in Latin, and there's like gold everywhere, and there's you know this very ceremonial um, process, which was really also beautiful and amazing. Uh, and, and so for me. Those are the thoughts that kind of come to my head during this time. And I think as I've, as I've gotten a little older, I've come to appreciate uh, really thinking about what the, the Last Supper is, right? Like this idea that um, Jesus, in the way he always does, right, takes some kind of some, some thing that happens, it's ritualized, or it's this preconceived thing, and then flips it on its head and opens up kind of a whole new meaning for it. And so for me, that is what, uh, that is something really special about the Last Supper. Because you see, I mean, I, I picture Jesus, um, I picture a scene of Jesus and all his friends sitting around talking, there's laughter, we're telling stories, we're, we're enjoying each other's company, we're loving each other. And, and then this moment where it, it really opens up and reveals like this whole new level of knowing because of that, right? And Jesus, it opens them up to learning something at, at a new level. And, and, you know, again, Jesus like strips it down and it's simplified. It's not, uh, it, it's not about this ritual or this thing that's, that's, that's wrapped up into it. It, it really is, um, you know, we're together, we're present, we love each other. And in fact, right, like he gives this new, he gives a new commandment out of that, Amen. right? Like love each other. I mean, it's, it's, you know, love each other as I've loved you, right? And so there's there's not a question of like you got to have this certain meal and you've got to be this certain level of human to do it. And we're not putting putting uh, limits on like who you can love or what their race is or denomination or or faith. It's just be together, love each other. Um, 
and really breaking down the, the, the complexities of that and making it simple, which I think particularly for COVID right now is something I need a great deal of reminder about. Like I, I've, if this has taught me anything, it's been I need to simplify life and try to, uh, try, to try to uncomplicate things. And so for me, this is just a great reminder um, you know, that something as simple as bread and wine can literally be this, um, this practice of bringing ourselves back to presence and remind us to love each other. Uh, it just doesn't get any more simple than that. So, um, and I'm, I'm thinking of the word hol- just holy. I mean, yeah. you know, that holy isn't this meaning of being set apart, but holy is like being able to share. That's, that's right. And, and, and the other and thing that's, love. the other thing that I love about this is that it is a, it's an example. I mean, it's a, it's a documented example of a practice that Jesus is doing that we can, that, that we can do and that we take and we, you can see it. It's like a, it's like a direct teaching, right? Which is really cool. Um, I don't know if that's sacrilegious or not. <laughs> but, but I mean, but, but really, um, I, I think, I think the idea of, um, the idea of, 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 of simplifying things and loving each other is for me really what this is about. And it's a great reminder of that as we go through our daily lives and the rest of the year. Very rich. <laughs>